Hey, 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 want to give a quick shout out to Mint Mobile for sponsoring this episode. I don't know if you guys have been following the news, but a lot of Chinese Americans, Asian Americans have been attacked, like physically and verbally attacked. I did one video chat date and she was like doing her dishes or something. <laughs> You know, we're all friends and like we're all on the same page. We're like, yeah, obviously, don't be racist. Don't be racist. Cool. No one's racist. And then you go on social media and you're like, oh, yeah, these people live different lives from me and haven't learned the same things I've learned. So you were saying it's a big deal that a random YouTuber shows up there. Meanwhile, Chuck Norris lives there. Wow, Ian Hecox. All we got is this boring Chuck Norris <laughs> over there. <laughs> Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, welcome to the Smosh cast. We are still at home, baby. Staying safe, staying sexy. And and uh, with me today is the the ineffable. I actually don't know what that word means, but I heard it in cats. Uh, a Courtney Miller, a Shane Top, and Olivia Sway. Hi, ineffable sounds like unfuckable. Oh, really? Oh, no. I don't know. They say it in they say it in cats. Do you remember the part where they're like, "Effable, effable." You watched cats. Effable. I saw Good for it twice. You. you really are in I quarantine. I saw it twice in theater. This is this is the funny thing about the state of of like theater going. Well, pre quarantine, uh, is that I missed most of the Oscar movies when they're in theaters. But I saw Cats twice in theaters. <laughs> that that's, that's so strange. That, that just goes to show. Ineffable yeah. means too great or extreme to be expressed or described in words. Oh, oh wow. Thank you. Wow. I should find a different word then. <laughs> you should just like every every girl you meet on a date, you should just say you're in F. Ooh. And they'll be like, what? You don't want to bang me? Oh, wait, it's a compliment. It's the perfect amount of being mean and being nice to a girl. I know. Ooh. Yeah, but if she's not uh, but if she's not effable, I'll still say that and be like, ha, huh, you thought it was a compliment, but you're not. And that's how super villains go on dates. Yeah. I'm basically the <laughs> Lex Luthor of, of Bumble Dates. <laughs> Nice. I feel like you're the go-go gadget because you're like an inspector following leads and you're <laughs> having to use technology now because you can't see them in person. Yeah. You have to, have you been doing that? Have you been doing a, like video chat dates or what's the situation on that? So I've done, I've done one FaceTime date. I'm trying to set up some others, Oh, but it's weird. Like, I feel like, I think everyone kind of burned through like what they thought they were going to like do in their quarantine in like the first week. And now everyone's just like, what do we do now? I fostered a dog today, so. Yeah, Say dude, what? wait. Yeah, wait, can I show you guys how she looks yes, like? Yes, please. She's here? Yeah, she's here at the house, but I also have photos of her. What kind of doggy? She's a husky oh. mix. Is she big or some, like medium? or? Little? She's a puppy. Oh. oh, buddy. Oh, what a little lady. Or you on Instagram, I just posted her. That's so smart, fostering an animal right now. Cause you're you're home yeah. all the time, like there to like take exactly. care of it. Exactly, we don't need to go anywhere. That's so smart. She's like so sweet, and um, that's why I was late to this <laughs> podcast. I got a text message this morning to pick up the foster. So then I literally, like, Sam pooped so fast, right? Like super that's speed, rare. <laughs> super speed. Uh, I super speeded it too, by the way. So you both were I like, we got to go pick up this dog. So we both we both need to. Sh right now you no, guys have excited like, poops no like i we just like we're like we need to leave now we need to get there um and then we get there and then we were the first ones there but the the fo the, the the pups weren't they didn't arrive yet and uh we waited for like a super long time and uh, more people started showing up and this woman was just like kind of freaking out because she was the only person there and there, i think there was like 10 different dogs whoa and everyone's like waiting to pick one up. And um, she wasn't sure which puppy or which dog went to like who. <laughs> so we were all like, no, no, we we wanted this like black uh, little puppy, but it's OK. Anything works. So she was just handing off these fosters and like we had to decide like which pup like it was just awkward. Do you know what yeah. I mean? 
Like we all wanted a certain one, but then the person that we told wasn't there. So we're all just like, are you okay with this one? Like, and we don't want to be asked. Like they're, they're puppies are so cute. Like who cares? But it was like, just, it was, it was weird. Um, and then this girl, and then this girl just comes in. We, we've been waiting for like more than an hour. And this girl drives up and she's like parked in the middle of the street. She goes in the house, just takes one in and what? Leaves. And then we're just like, wait, we were all like waiting. Like it was weird. We were like, uh I think you just witnessed a like, puppy okay. heist. It was it was a lot, but um we we're really happy that uh we got to do it. It was and we saw a bunch of friends that were there too. It was literally the actors of Los Angeles meeting up on this tiny street <laughs> getting puppies. Jeez. Okay, wait, so what so then where are these puppies coming from? It was really sad. So there were two there were um, two dogs, like grown. They were just dumped outside of a ranch oh, they're abandoned. in Bakersfield. Oh. And then, um, so, yeah, it's it's really really sad. Um, and a lot of the puppies were just like thrown to like a farm or somewhere like far out. And they this dude just goes and picks them up. Oh, wow! Well, yeah. that's really sweet. I think I think now is such a. Yeah, it's such a perfect time to foster. Um, Was it hard? Is it hard to like get like set up to do that? No, not at all. A lot of my friends have been um, fostering through this foundation and um, they've been getting like so, an overwhelming amount of applicants um, because of social media and all of that. So it took about like I turned in my application form a week and a half ago. Mm little less than that and then she told me to hang tight because there's a lot of applicants but sam's so i'm i'm quarantining with sam my boyfriend and cameron their roommates and best friends and they both have like experience with training puppies and yeah if you need any help i i don't mean to brag but i have very good experience with training dogs and yeah why don't you why don't you foster a puppo yeah, I think I would sooner foster a cat, which is why I'm interested in what you're saying. Too. I would yeah, probably foster like foster. an adult cat that hopefully won't like freak out. And I'll text you the information and the woman that I was talking to. I'm like so excited. I've never had a responsibility of taking care of another like living <laughs> thing. So I'm excited to like, but the boys are having fun. We don't have a name for her yet. We're thinking of Banana. Oh, that's so cute because you've been working with Banana so much. I feel like yeah, that would be, be a great name for a dog that Shane is fostering. <laughs> <laughs> it is Monday. <laughs> don't take the name. But I was texting Garrett this morning too, telling him I was running behind. And he was like, oh my God, like, where are you doing this? Like, what kind of a dog is it? Like, we're thinking about doing the same thing. Yeah. So I think a lot of people are mm -hmm. hopping on that foster train. And I really think we're going to get so attached to this yep. pup. She's so sweet. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. There's also, yeah. Fostering kittens is, is a big thing as well. I don't, yeah. yeah. I probably would want to give like an older cat a chance. Do they do, do they do foster? I guess they do, right? They do fostering for. I think so. Pups and cats of all ages and, mm -hmm. and sizes. Cause like all those, like every kind of animal gets abandoned. Yeah. By a farm. Like, I am still like working quite a bit. So, like, I want to be able to have a cat that's like still kind of independent. Mm -hmm. So, I can be like filming and stuff, but mm -hmm. also have someone to like hug so tight that I almost pop them. I know. Cause we we're, we we're talking to, we were talking to Tommy yesterday, our, our, our uh, social editor. We had a, group of people all in a in a Google Hangout. And he's like, I am just so desperate to touch an animal. Like, I just want to give, I just want to give like belly scratches to something. I'm like, if you want, I could just put my dog out front. You could drive by and just like pet her. And he's like, don't, he's like, I will do that. I will jump out of my car as it's still going. No, it's not safe. My neighbor has this little dog that is so confused why I won't walk up to him and pet him. But I'm just like, yeah, it sucks. Like, I haven't pet a dog in like a month and a half. And then the, my neighbor, he's like, yeah, I mean, like kind of almost willing to <laughs> offer. And I was like, no, nope, it's not safe. Like, I, we don't know. Like, I could. And he's like, yeah. And the dog's just like, what? 
is going on? <laughs> maybe Dogs are just, so confused Maybe right you now. could just tell the owner to like brush the dog a bunch and collect all the fur and then give it to you. And you could just like knit another dog. If I then, had a dog, I would probably be like, hey, if you use hand sanitizer, I will let you pet my dog. And then I will just like get like wipe my dog down because they have like puppy wipes that clean them. I think that's what we need. I think we need to get some puppy wipes. They're great because like ba bathing a dog is good, but you aren't supposed to do it too often. And wipes are great because they make them smell nice and get the, the, the immediate stuff like. I'm going to tell Sam to order some online. Yeah, puppy wipes are great. Try not to get anything too perfumey. Like try and get some very gentle like stuff because puppies are, they're skin sensitive. Puppy skin. Puppy skin. <laughs> what are we, Cruella de Vil? <laughs> but Ian, so you've only gone on one video chat date? Yeah. Like I was saying, like people, like I feel like, I feel like all the dating apps were pop, 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 popping off on like the first week of lockdown. Really? You think so? But you can't like Yeah, see that. but like everyone was just desperate and bored. So I think everyone was just kind of really? going to the apps because they couldn't meet people in real life. But now I feel like it's definitely like mellowed out a little bit, maybe. But yeah, I did I did one I did one video chat date. It was fine. It was it was it was what like, you, like what how do you guys like set did it? Did you up? get naked? Yeah, I just had my butthole showing the whole time. That's um, Omegle. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah that is like were you having coffee and eating like it was like a date or were you guys just like chatting well i had a glass of wine oh my god bitch and uh and she was like doing her dishes or something <laughs> oh my god it's completely different yeah <laughs> so like it was married it was for right. 25 years People that's so rude to do dishes while on a date just so loud clanking of the plates yeah a quarantine right? date should not have chores going on Guys, if you're using one of the uh, big wireless providers this year, have you asked yourself what the heck you're paying for? Between expensive retail stores, inflated prices, hidden fees, you're being taken advantage of because they know you'll pay. Enter Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile provides the same premium network coverage that you're used to, but at a fraction of the cost because everything is online. Mint Mobile saves on retail locations and overhead, then passes those savings directly to you. Ditch your old wireless bill and start saving with Mint Mobile. If any of that sounds interesting to you, if that applies to any of y'all, get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free. All you gotta do is go to mintmobile.com slash smosh. That's mintmobile.com slash smosh. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Smosh. I've been doing more chores than like ever. I wait. The first thing I do in the morning, I go downstairs and I start wiping everything down. I've been doing that for like 20 years. Damn, can you days. just live at my place? Because I'm not, not doing anything. So I'm cleaning like Sam's place and my own place. Like I go back to my apartment to like wipe down everything, even though I'm not there. Oh, man. I like I've, I will. I'll be saving chores to do different days so that I know I have something to do. Like I finally was like, all right, it's time to to mop my floors and I like I, I feels good to like be clean and be like, virus, you can't touch me. Yeah. And just like having I feel like maintaining a clean space will help a lot. Like for because if I was sitting in a mess during all this stressful stuff happening, like I would be ten times worth it worse than how I am now. Yeah. Like what we're, we've been, we've been now filming with a little bit more gear for sketch and stuff. And with pod, like getting, getting gear, like it made me nervous at first. Cause I was like, I don't know where to put this. I live in an apartment. Yeah. Um, but I actually, I went and bought stuff and created a workspace. So I have like my desk and I got a computer that I'm playing Sims on now. <laughs> um, but I like am I have like a organized corner now with where my gear goes and stuff. So I feel better about it. I only clean when somebody's expected to be over at my place. It's so, definitely good motivation. So without that motivation, I'm like, well, I do have like a plate that I use for dinner sitting on my table. But I don't really need to get rid of it right now. No, just put it in your sink. Yeah, but it's like the sink's over there and the plate's there. Um, My new thing is because like dishes are loud with the sink and everything. I don't have a dishwasher, which 
this makes me so sad. But I will put on my noise canceling wireless little like gym headphones and I'll listen to a podcast while I do my dishes. I like I like doing chores now. I've changed. <laughs> I, I Quarantine really, changed, changed me. <laughs> it, dude, yesterday it was so funny. We got that like thing going and everyone started posting silly photos. Yeah, so, so I was waiting for that. yours, Ian. Yeah, Ian, why, why what didn't you, you do? Doing? Okay, yeah, well, yeah. It too. So let's like, explain the, the backstory if people don't know. So basically, when yesterday morning, uh, I woke up and I was like, frick, I need Instagram <laughs> content so bad. Dude, <laughs> and I look, I open Instagram, Olivia, you're the first thing I saw. And I was like, that'd be really funny to copy her. <laughs> and then <laughs> I, as soon as I posted it, I literally worked so fast. And then I went into the quarantine uh, group chat. And I was like, guys, you guys got to copy Olivia with me. That's, oh, I thought it was like organically everyone just started doing it. Joe did it. I didn't know Joe was going to do it. It was like, it was so uh, funny. I really wanted Ian to do it because he's yeah. got the most I mean, prime. I just don't want to put you guys to shame, you know? Well, you should have. What else also, were you doing yesterday? So much. Like. He was on his like, st he was still on his um date. Yeah. Except no one was on the other end. <laughs> no one's on the other end. I'm just waiting for her to call me back, just like staring at the phone. <laughs> the FaceTime thing has been going for days. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been quarantining alone, right? Like all of you guys? Yeah. I tried visiting my family like really carefully a little bit ago and it was it was nice, but also just like kind of frustrating because I want to be able to just like hug my family and like frick it, I'll sleep over, like whatever. But yeah. it's just we're living in completely different towns and like my my sister's still like going to stores and stuff pretty regularly like i try and do only like super necessary errands and stuff and like i just i don't want to risk any cross contamination of any kind yeah. i'm not like not like what are the, whether it's them maybe carrying it or me maybe carrying it like whatever but yeah cuz i think some people are just taking it a little more seriously than others which which is hard Everyone's got to take it very, very seriously. I was talking to my best friend, um, Lily, who was on my podcast this week talking about, you know, what's really going on in the front line. And she works at a really big hospital in L.A. And uh, she works in the COVID positive patients ICU. So she's like seeing this like 18 hours a day. She only sleeps for like three hours. And like, she is like dealing with this. And she was saying, she was like, I've seen 90 year old people be okay. And I've seen really young people like us, like, like horribly dealing with this. Like it's painful. It's really, really sad. So the best thing is to take it super seriously. What's the harm in taking it super seriously? My sister, she's an EMT and she's been around. They actually asked her to go into Seattle to possibly oh. help transfer patients and stuff. She's like, she wasn't really working with any positive patients for a while, but now they're sometimes having to like transport them. Like, okay, you don't need to be in the hospital. You can continue care at home. So she's, yeah. their job is to like transport those people back home to yeah. safe. Ooh. And she's, she's careful. Like, cause she lives with a bunch of people at home. It's like her group of people that she sword fights with, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's that sister that is a knight, <laughs> Loki a knight. Um, she like takes off her gear and leaves it there at work. Her knight gear? Her, no, her, her EMT. That'd be uniform. so funny if she wears her suit of armor out to like go grocery shopping. It might as well be that because they are, it's like going to war <laughs> with this virus. And there's no masks like they there are, but it's they're just taking a lot of donations. Oh, so. our, our wardrobe person that we ha had for the longest time, and then she like went off to go do this like TV show. Yeah, she she also has this like company that, or not company. It's like her hustle her side hustle. I think it's called Witch and Heathen. She makes mm. really cool like candles and stuff like in like random uh, jars and containers with like crystals and herbs in the wax. Ooh, I would buy that. And now she started making like really pretty cloth masks with like oh. filter stuff in them, like in pockets to put filters in. That's amazing. Yeah, I've heard that like a lot of a lot of like the LA costumers are switching to like manufacturing masks and stuff. So it's kind of cool. Like it's, you know, obviously all the costumers in LA that would normally have jobs working on television shows and digital shows, like 
they're pretty much all out of work. Yeah. Cause there's like a, apparently where, near where my sister was living, uh, an aircraft, like a, a Navy, um, vessel or aircraft carrier was coming in and they were like sending out a request for basically to have like a huge line of people making those cloth masks. So my sister's roommate, who's been also like making those trendy masks, mm. got like called up to go and do that and like start making masks for the, for like the people coming, coming in in the Navy. How is it like being alone? Quarantining alone? I mean, I, I haven't been too lonely. I mean, like I've been FaceTiming with my family regularly. I got my I got my APM cheer for my for my neighborhood. So I, that's that's my social interaction with with other people. So every every night at APM, like my whole neighborhood, like does like a celebration for like medical workers and Aww. essential personnel. So people just like yelling. Yeah, like it gets it gets more sophisticated every every uh, week. I think luckily they're not doing it anymore, but somebody brought out like a high powered laser and was like shining it around. And I was like, ah, okay, maybe don't do that. But there's been like a sixth grader with a, with a trumpet that's like playing the national, uh, national anthem. That's the worst, right? A sixth grader playing a trumpet. Yeah. It's look, it's I don't not, know. I was a sixth grader playing a violin and it sounded like freaking <laughs> scratches. On it's not the best, but plate. it's, it's so adorable. Cause like you, you know, he's like trying Aww. and, and then after like he's done, like the whole, like the whole neighborhood's like, yeah. So Aww. it's fun. And you get to scream into the void and there's something really cathartic about just screaming yeah. as loud as possible for no reason. Shane, how have you been dealing with, with uh, a homie lonely? Uh, I've completely lost my fucking mind. Uh, at about 7 PM, I put on war paint and I try to catch my shadow, and I'm getting really close. Uh, he's he's very fast, uh, but I'm gonna get him. Uh, then, generally, at some point in the day, I just post random dumb stuff on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, this has actually been pretty stellar for my content because my content has always been stupid things at home by myself. <laughs> that is literally all I've ever posted on Instagram. That's uh, true. You can scroll back. Uh, so really, this this quarantine that's the been one of the only plus sides for me is that I now have no excuse but to make the content I usually make. Have you been exercising, Shane? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I have. Um, I bought a couple dumbbells and a kettlebell, hey. and uh, I have some resistance bands and a jump rope, and I just kind of. At a certain time of the day, if I have a window, I just go until I literally feel exhausted. So that's anywhere from an hour to three hours. And I'm Whoa. Just, yeah. Whoa. Jesus. Well, I just have all the time in the world. So I'm just like, all right, I'll just keep going until. I know. Three hours? I think it's like, like keeping well, I, going. But it's yeah. also I'll put on like a TV show. So I'll just be watching episodes while I just continue to do stuff in that time. Wow. I, I mean, even three know. hours is like max, but that's also me like taking breaks in between stuff for like a few minutes or whatever. Like, you, Do you know. take like a snack break? Uh, <laughs> no, I'll often like make a protein shake that I'll drink throughout the workout. Um, or maybe I'll sneak like a Cadbury cream egg or something. Oh, <laughs> naughty boy. Yeah. How's everybody <laughs> nice. else's workouts going? I've been running a lot. Nice. I. I'm like really proud of myself because I don't like to run, but I've downloaded this new app called Nike Run Club and you set a goal for yourself and then you just like, they tell you in your AirPods um, how your speed, how much you've ran, and then you you like win badges. Cute. Or however, yeah, it's great. I love running outside, but I've been carrying a pepper spray with me. Good. I ordered it on Amazon. That's good. And um, Sam's actually been so awesome with um, running with me. Sam runs like for a five mile run, his time is like 36 That's minutes. That's insane. He's like super fast. That's a really good so mile pace, he could Damn. just Yeah, he's, he averages like seven minutes. Well, that makes sense because um, he plays basketball. So I would imagine he has good endurance. Yeah, it's crazy. But I feel bad because I slow him down. But he's willing to just like run with me because he's like, I don't know if you guys have been following the news, but a lot of. Chinese Americans, Asian Americans have been attacked, like physically Ugh. and verbally attacked. So Sam is just like really worried just about me being in public and like running errands and stuff like that. So he's just been like, yes, a couple days ago I was running by myself because I was like, I got this. And then he like called me three times Aww. in my run, making sure that I was okay. 
Oh, that's cute. That's yeah. so sweet. He's your personal buddy guard. He yeah. Is. yeah. I can't believe this shit's yeah. like actually still happening. I can because yeah, people are dumb. It's terrifying. It's really scary. I don't even like my mom will tell me. She's like, yeah, like I went out to get groceries and I'm just like so worried about her just waiting in line and someone just look. It's just it's it's a very horrific, disgusting situation that Asian Americans are being put through right now. I just worry about my family and my friends just being out there. It's dangerous. It's good that you've been like yeah. um, using your your platform and like your podcast and everything, bringing awareness of that stuff because we do have a voice and it's important to use it, especially now. Yeah, and it, this is not even like politics or what side you're on. It's just human decency and it's just having compassion, mm -hmm. you know? So no matter what political point of view you have, this is just pure racism. So just don't be a racist. Don't be racist. Don't be a little. Just don't be racist, dummy. dude. Like you can be anything. You can be affiliated with any party. Just don't be a fucking racist. But yeah, even on my social media, I've been reading like comments like, you know, oh, are you going to eat bat soup? Like, oh my God. Um, no. I don't even like pay attention to it, but the fact that, you know, people have the audacity to even comment that or just even bring it up and talk about it. It's it's such a shock usually because, you know, we're all friends and like we're all on the same page. We're like, yeah, obviously don't be racist. Don't be racist. Cool. No one's racist. And then you go on social media and you're like, oh, yeah, these people live different lives from me and haven't learned the same things I've learned. So like it's it's still but you never get used to it. Like, Olivia, you and I were talking yesterday, like just when you're scrolling through comments and you're like, oh, wow, these people are still making derogatory comments like that, like about our cast and like, cool. Like you're like, yeah. what is? And I think especially right now, a lot of these comments are stemmed from fear, you know? And I think being fearful of this virus makes you and makes you do crazy things and makes you think about some really hateful things. Yep. So, I mean, I think education it's tough. Has a yeah. lot to do with, you know, how you want to react to things like also, this. Also, like, the, the hilarious, like, it's not hilarious, but the, the thing that just kind of, like, exemplifies the, the dummy attitude of some people is, like, the people that have been, like, physically attacking, like, Asian Americans, like, it's like, you're coming into contact with these people and you're <laughs> saying that they have the virus. Yeah, that's, that's smart. That's some that's some that's some big brain Just thinking. Zero I mean, you're probably talking about the same uh, people who th are not drinking Corona beers out of fear. <laughs> I mean, that's a legitimate thing going on. The mm -hmm. potential for stupidity is kind of infinite. That is kind of the, that amazed. is kind of I the great the that is kind of the great power of the internet is that now the <laughs> these like racists are being outed. It's like okay, there. <laughs> It's yeah. it's all out there and it's all now public knowledge and it'll probably be attached to your name and face forever. So have fun with that. But the thing is, is that like I the, the ones that I've seen, right there, it's on social media and there's a lot of just these situations happening to Asian Americans where it's not documented right. and it's not put all over the Internet. So. You know, this is still happening, but maybe just because it's not on the internet, people don't know as much about it as you know the the ones that have been viral. But well, and the, and the problem the problem on. also is people are getting outed and they're not caring. People are people are now yeah. openly and proud of being racist. Uh, and when you have a racist president, it's you, if the person at the top is just as racist, then you're not worried about about exactly or anything i think the one that really just i like read i read the article and i just cried um was that this little girl got stabbed yeah, dude, at a supermarket no, so with her family and it was a 19 year old guy who did it and um he just told the police that he thought they were spreading coronavirus in their town yeah so he felt like he needed to protect his town and his people <laughs> so he just stabbed the crap out of this Chinese family. Yeah, that's a big old yikes. Yeah, and 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 you know, I've always felt like when I walk out in public, I feel like I'm pretty confident and I don't really think about how I look, but this this time right now has made me really 
look at myself from the outside and like kind of know I don't know why this sounds like kind of fucked up, but it's like I know my place now in America, mm. you know? I think most people are all on the same page that these things that are happening are insane. Right. And even if it's not a physical act or like somebody outwardly saying something, it's just the mentality of people thinking that a Chinese person in America has coronavirus or that they brought coronavirus to the country. Like that is just dangerous in itself, you know, and enough to put fear in Asian Americans that other people, maybe they're not verbally saying it to us in public or they're not physically attacking us, but just the 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 cruel thought that we are a virus scares me. I feel weird talking about this with a handlebar mustache. <laughs> what does your hat say, by the way? Oh, this is, um, I got this hat. This is, uh, I think it says Westwood lumberjacks oh nice i was out in it's this little tiny mountain town out near sort of like where me and my family go for like holidays it's like up in the mountains up north north california i heard there's like a new coffee shop out in the little town so i was like oh check it out so i like went there i was like reading a book and like the person behind the counter was like you look familiar i was like oh uh i do like youtube stuff she's like oh my god yeah okay because it's a small town i think she was the theater teacher but also like the english teacher at the school and she's like she's like one of my students is like a huge smosh fan and i was like oh that's cool uh and then so like (laughs) so i'm still there like reading a book whatever and uh and then and then that student comes in oh my and she's God. like and she's like i'm sorry i just had like i had to tell her i was like that's no problem so like i <laughs> i uh took a picture with her whatever i was talking to him for a little bit and then like another kid like comes like bursting into the the coffee shop like out of breath and i was like did you like literally just run over here from your house he's like yeah oh my god this is crazy Oh my <laughs> so, god! And so it ended up being like so six, cute. like six kids, Jesus. and they're all just like hanging out. This just, teacher like that. mini docs to you a little bit. Like- yeah, it, it didn't matter. <laughs> I mean, like, look, it's it's a small town. Like, yeah. how often does like a weird thing like that happen? Like, mm-hmm. some random person you're watching on YouTube is randomly at your coffee shop, and there's no one else in the coffee shop. It was like literally just me and then the person working there. That's cute. So we're hanging out. Oh, they they mentioned, dude, this is the craziest thing. They uh they put on a like theater production and they did I think a couple a couple sketches from our Smosh Live uh production. No way. Yeah. So they did they did the hangman sketch. <laughs> wow. And I don't think they did Inner Glack Whip, but I think they did one other one. But yeah, they did the Hangman sketch. Wow. That's so funny. So they gave me a hat for free. That's cute. Wow. So I'll wear, I'll wear it with pride. That's so crazy they did Westwood, what up? Live. Yeah. That's really cute. They're like, they're like, yeah, Chuck Norris lives around here too. He like goes to the same church. So you were saying it's a big deal that a random YouTuber shows up there. Meanwhile, Chuck Norris lives there. Yeah, I don't know if he like lives news. there all year round. Yeah, or Chuck Norris he... is bullshit to them. They don't give a f- <laughs> <laughs> No, Chuck Norris is definitely a bigger deal because he can like roundhouse kick and all those other jokes that people made 10 years ago. <laughs> wow, Ian Hecox. All we got is this boring Chuck Norris <laughs> over there. <laughs> Sarah, Olivia, I'm glad Sam is there for you and... It's really sweet that he's so protective of you like that. And yeah, I feel like um, Sam and I have gotten like closer in this quarantine. You know, I feel like most people either get really tired of each other because <laughs> yeah. we have been together for almost 30 days. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's ever, you know, spent that much. Like, I don't, I've never spent that much time with someone. I asked him and he, I was like, so what do you f- like think about this? Like us quarantine? He's like, honestly, I feel like it's a, it's like a different type of love it's like a deeper love that i have for you now so when the quarantine lifts y'all get married no i'm divorcing him (laughs) you're moving to that little town you're at and hang out chuck what i said you guys definitely like learn a lot about each other huh honestly like i tried like the first week i was like 
I would ask you some questions. And he was like, shut the f*** up. <laughs> Well, you can't run anywhere, so now is the perfect time. I know, right? I was like, I was like, so like when you were little, like, what were the things that like your mom would? And he was like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why do you care now? <laughs> That's so cute. There's no running from this, but, Sam. You have nowhere yeah. to hide. You have nowhere to hide. Court, you know that seal that you gave me? Yes, the one I got in San Diego. You. You know he's been with me everywhere. That's so cute. I even saw you like were traveling with him, right? He went to Milan with me. <laughs> he went to New York with me. And you wouldn't even tell me. I would just see it in your Instagram story, like you using it as a pillow and stuff. <laughs> Wait, I like he sleeps with me. You don't understand. He's a part of my family. And he almost got lost in Milan. It's like a but, harbor oh. seal, right? It's like a baby harbor seal. Is that what it's supposed to be like? I don't know. It's like I, white. His name is Seal. It's like a white seal, right? Yes, it's, yeah, it's, it's so a little cute. it's a little guy. I it's an extension so of myself. So yeah. I thank it, you for taking me everywhere with you. That was that was my yeah. childhood uh stuffed animal. I think I still have it somewhere, but it's like a smaller a seal? It's a, yeah. It's like a little white a little white seal pup. Uh oh. it's like smaller than that, but it was my childhood uh t- like stuffed animal that I kept forever. Yeah. It's like the beanie baby, but it's for babies. So they don't put beans in them. They put this like, it's not normal fluff. It's like this extra, almost like. It's so, it's like a marshmallow. It's almost, yeah, it's like marshmallowy. how soft it is. And I knew, I was like, I'm getting this for Olivia. I love imagining just like little Ian with a little toy. Cause he's such a grown <laughs> ass man, Damn especially yeah. with his mustache. Like I just like want to <laughs> think of you as like a little baby. Just so cute. I cut all of his like fuzzy fur off because I dropped him in the toilet once when I was peeing. So oh yeah, I remember that story. Yeah, so I cut all his fur off and then like ha- like had my mom like wash him. Yeah, you told that story on show with no name. Yeah, yeah. Do you have um, a Do you have a childhood yeah. toy, Shane? Uh, yeah. Weight a ten pound weight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I talked about my uh, my childhood things once, I think, on Show with No Name. But I had I had the pillowcases from oh, yeah. when I was a baby. Oh yeah, from my bed, like my uh, crib. Um, I I had the pillows, the the pillowcases, and I called them my cold pillows. And I would even sometimes throw them in the freezer for a little bit. And because I liked, I would like hold them to my face when I slept in my bed as like an extra cushion. I would just ball them up right there. Oh. And uh, I like that they were cold because I get too hot when I'm, I still, it's why I don't sleep under the covers. Uh, so back then it was like a like little cold thing. And I would just have Ice them all, all the time with me. And then for most, most of my childhood, I just had them in bed. Like they, I would just sleep with them. I didn't like carry them around all day. Shane, is that a real plant behind you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a plant. This thing needs like zero sunlight. It's a snake plant, right? Yeah. It, it gets like a little bit of sunlight in this room, but it's doing fine. Dude, my mom is like calling me nonstop because I sh- I told her that I fostered a dog. <laughs> oh my <laughs> I'm so God. scared. I really want to foster a cat now, dude. You got me thinking about it. You should do it. I you might look into it. that today. Okay, this was something... This was something that was brought up uh, in our, we had a group of people from, from work all in a Google Hangout. And, and, I, and I thought about it, I was like, oh yeah. And then I read a news article about it, quarantine dreams. Have you oh, guys been having, yeah. have you guys been having like extra vivid dreams since quarantine? Yeah, yes. dude. I don't think, well, Shane doesn't dream. I don't dream. Shane, have you been dreaming? Nope. Okay, because I don't ever remember my dreams, and lately I've been having like crazy dreams that I kind every of remember. Night. And then, every and then, night. yeah, this this LA Times article came out about it, and it's like, yeah, everybody's not well, except for Shane apparently, but uh, everybody's been having like extra vivid dreams. Yeah, usually stressful for me. Sometimes they're scary. I don't like it. You should um, look it up. Uh, yeah, sometimes I look them up, but like I even asked my therapist, I was like. Are there meanings behind dreams? And she's like, yeah, usually they, they, it's not like a, like, like sometimes they do correlate with something in your life. Um, like last night I had a stress dream because today I'm, I'm supposed to meet with our, our merch person, um, Liz to 
discuss possible future things for the hoo hoo line. Ooh. And last night Ooh. I was having stress dreams that like merch was being released that we didn't like want, like <laughs> hoo hoo popsicles, and like I didn't. <laughs> I don't understand how. Like, popsicles. But, yeah. Um, so that was last night. I've had some like, yeah. And then there's some like weird, yeah, they've just been vivid and like they kind of stick with me the next day for a little bit. But I think now I'm just starting to like just dismiss them a little more. But it's definitely been wild. What about you, Olivia? Have you been having weird ones? Yeah, this one was like a week ago. I posted on my social, but it was me like, um, like the the floor i was at the school and the floor was just crackling with lava seeping through it whoa and i was i'm like and then i try to get to the highest like desk and then i was just like on top of it on top of the desk and i see everything um below me just hot lava like in waves coming to the school whoa jeez that one was and then i looked it up online and the results were you're a little bitch (laughs) yeah that lines up (laughs) um i have a really quick question uh i wanted to ask hi Mm. it's me kevin uh hello Hello, shane yeah can you elaborate on the fact that you don't dream i don't think you've ever talked about that in the podcast before oh yeah shane tell us about how you can't dream yeah wait what um well i don't know i I have dreams. It's just, it's so insanely rare. And maybe it's just that I don't remember them, but literally like uh, maybe when I was, when I was younger, I used to have my dreams never made any semblance of sense, right? (laughs) Like, and they would jump around a bunch. It was never one coherent dream. Like it would be me in the woods with a weird rope trying to lasso a tiger. And then suddenly I'd be in a car, but it wouldn't be a car that I've ever seen before. And it would be in a car full of people I've never met before. And they're kind of just speaking gibberish. And then suddenly Mm -hmm. I'll be in space floating above. Like it would just, there's nothing for me to even Google afterwards. Like, what does this mean? It would just be like (laughs) all over. But yeah, I rarely do. Like I kind of, I go to bed and then I just, then I wake up. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it's so rare that I dream. Interesting. I mean, that's that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of a blessing in a way of like, I mean, you must sleep well then. I've never had sleep issues. Um, yeah, like. So I- you don't give it. Okay, no, it's too personal. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was going to ask about. <laughs> Do you know what I was going to ask about? No. No. I'm sorry. Ask I was going to be like, so you, like, what, you never even have like horny dreams? Yeah, horny uh, dreams. <laughs> when I was younger, when I was a horny. teenager. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I have a horny. <laughs> We all are. It's Sorry, word horny gets me horny. I feel like yeah. all my dreams are always stress dreams. The most, horny. the most common dreams I have is usually like I'm trying to drive somewhere and I'll crash the car or it's like time to go to an event and I don't have clothes or makeup on. And I'm like, <gasps> mm-hmm. yes, I get that too. But here's one thing I always wonder. Have you guys ever had a dream where you're on your phone? Because I've never had that yet. I'm on my phone <laughs> so much. But I never dream about being on my phone, ever. Uh, Probably because your brain is not actively thinking about looking. The activity is not looking at your phone. The activity is whatever is being presented by your phone. And that's what you're going to dream about. Interesting. But like the fact that I'm always on social media and thinking about like Instagram and Twitter, like I don't even have Twitter or Instagram dreams. I'm not on Twitter going, I am on Twitter. I'm on Twitter looking at a news headline and my brain is only thinking about that news headline. The news My, headline. my brain's mm-hmm. only thinking about the joke I'm reading and I'm going to dream about so that. Weird. You're not thinking about the projection. You're thinking about what's being projected. Whoa. It's the uh, allegory of the cave. <laughs> 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 My the dream that I remembered because I also don't usually remember my dreams, but I have been lately. I had a dream. Well, so I I kept seeing this ad pop up for that uh, that sci fi show, uh, The Expanse, and and I heard the show's really good, and I really want to see it, but I don't have Amazon Prime. Uh, but I've seen I've seen the bill I've seen like the ads, so I've seen the faces of the actors. And then I had a dream that I was watching the show and I had all the <laughs> actors, all the actors were in it, but I just made up like a sci-fi plot in my dream. That's so funny. And I was like, I guess this is the expanse. I used to get really into controlling my dreams. Like uh, when I was yes, younger. Me too. Yeah, that was like a thing. I, I would, when as soon as you realize you're dreaming, dreaming like stopping and 
making things appear or disappear and like deciding to fly because like I could fly yeah. in my dreams. Oh, um, that's lucid dreaming, right? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I think it yeah. depends because I couldn't, I can't like necessarily feel everything. Um, but lucid dreaming is when you can, are controlling your dream. It's when you're aware yeah. that you're dreaming. Yeah, I haven't done that. I haven't been able to do that. I can't even remember the last time I tried, like since like high school. Well, you next time you get one, you should try to look at your phone <laughs> and go on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's impossible. Maybe it's kind of like punching people in your dream. You can't do it. I want to, sorry, I want to add into that really quick. So for you, as far as looking at your phone or looking at data or reading things, that's actually how you lose a dream. By trying to read something, usually in your dreams, it's pure gibberish. So, Whoa. so if you're looking at your phone and then you read something and it's gibberish, that's a good way to wake yourself up in the dream and be like, oh, it's a dream. Or Whoa. you forgot how to read. That's oh. also it happens to me all the time. Yeah. Maybe you forgot how to read. Well, I'm waiting that seems for the day like that I forget. Forgetting how to read sounds like a perfect segue into shoot, dude. <laughs> shoot, dude. 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 Shoot, 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 dude. So today's shoot, dude, is from Brianna. McLaughlin. Boho. Yeah. Oh. Maybe this is uh maybe this is Rhett's daughter or something. Aww. Same last name. My soon to be mother in law, let's call her Becky, took me on a trip to Florida last summer. It was really sweet of her and we had a great time. However, there was a moment that exposed who I really am. One day, Becky and I were pretty far into the ocean. We were chatting and relaxing and having an overall great day. She was facing the shore and I was across from her facing the ocean. Suddenly, I saw this huge dark mass a few feet a few feet behind Becky. It was at least seven feet long, and I knew in my heart that it was a shark. In a moment of mindless self-preservation, I turned around and swam as fast as I could to the shore without one word of warning to Becky. I got to the shore before I thought to turn around and make sure she was okay. When I turned around, I saw not only her, but two or three other people still next to this dark mass. I expected screams of terror, but what I heard were delighted oohs and ahs. Turns out the shark I thought I saw was a manatee. Oh. oh. Who decided to get up close and personal to the Taurus. The manatee swam away before I got out to Becky. I made up some excuse about forgetting my sunglasses, which seemed oh my she God. seemed to believe. I never told Becky the truth, but the fact that I left the woman who will be my mother-in-law to be eaten by sharks will haunt me forever. But to quote Boneless, you got to stay safe. <laughs> or can She's you, Brianna Boneless. Can you uh, can you say that line? You, you got to stay safe out there. Wow, I haven't done that in a while. I've been very quiet in my quarantine, so that hurt. That's such a perfect, like, that needs the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme at the end of it. Because it's such a perfect scenario of, like, she thought yeah. it was a shark. She left her friends to die. Left her and then it was like, oh, my God. Situation of all time. Oh my god! Dun, 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 dun. It's so perfect. Oh my god! Yeah, Bro. that's so perfect. That's a shoot, dude. That's that's a that's a definite shoot, shoot dude. dude. That's an enjoyable me. shoot, dude, because nobody got hurt or severely embarrassed yeah. or anything. Yep. I mean, she got embarrassed for almost killing her mother in law. Yeah, but you know what? She now has hopefully that shoot, dude. If she's ever in a situation where there is a shark, she'll now act. Accordingly, Differently. yeah. So, I so, guess it was a good, a good yeah, life lesson. I mean, oh, yeah, to, so to good literally question. Just yell shark. So, yeah, good so question. What would you guys do in that situation? I'll go, oh my god, shark, and swim. Yeah, I think I would, uh, you know, I, I don't believe anyone who ever says outright that they would do the heroic thing. Like, anyone who's no. like, oh, I would for sure save my friend, I'm like, you don't know what you'd do, but I do think out of fear, I would probably yell something. And it might just be, ah! <laughs> but like I would yeah. do something that would alert the people around me that there's something going on. Mm -hmm. So I would at least silently. Run I would away. at least scream and pee my pants so there'd be warmth that would maybe warm them oh. or that would warn them. Warm them. <laughs> that would warm and warn them. They'd be like, "Whoa, it's really warm right now. Did someone pee? We got to get out of here." That's how I would get them out of the water. See. 
That's what I do I all the time. I can't swim, so you, someone would have to save me or I'll die. Oh, yeah, no. see, Olivia would be screwed even if she was... No, she's fine because no. she won't be in the ocean in the first place. That's true. True. Yeah. Dude, Olivia, maybe you could use this opportunity in quarantine to learn how to swim. Where? Where? Uh, fill up your room with water, <laughs> duh. <laughs> like the guy with the, the Orbeez? Yeah, exactly. Just learn to swim in your bath. Learn to swim in Orbeez. Dude, I can't. I think you bring up a good point, Shane, where like... In the moment of something really scary, like you think you're gonna say something, but usually what comes out is just ah. Yeah, um, I feel yeah. like realistically, I'm such a space cadet. I would be like, <gasps> and then point, and then I wouldn't react until my other friends reacted because I wouldn't. I usually I'm like I'm stupid. I probably am reacting wrong, and so I'd probably die myself while they react properly. <laughs> I have instances from my life that I can draw upon where I know that I make a very dumb sound. Uh, well, I've, I think I've told this story before, but when I was a kid, I was in Florida and I was hanging out in some mangroves behind my grandparents' house and I heard this scratching sound and <laughs> I turn and there was, and I'm not kidding, it's like it's like half a foot long like or big, a rhinoceros beetle. And I mean, it was gigantic. Ooh. It was the size of a rat uh, right next what? to me. And my, oh my the God. noise the noise that came out of my mouth was not, ah, the noise that came out of my mouth was like, Whoa! Like it was, <laughs> yeah. it was because I don't know what to do. I'm trying to run and scream at the same time. Have you seen that? You've seen that video of the uh, of like the news anchor with like the uh, the lizard the that lizard. jumps on him. Yes, that is very realistic because that is because your your body is f- like your muscles are like spasming because you're trying to like <laughs> dodge away from whatever while also putting out noise. So it's not going to be one fluid motion and one fluid sound. It's going to be like it's yeah. going to be all over it. Like that's what it is. It's, it's so, so insane. Olivia, are you good? <laughs> yeah, dude, his story really just like shocked me and this whole setup got destroyed. I didn't know a beetle could be so large, but I've heard They're, like in Florida, it was everything huge, And I didn't bigger. know that they were native to Florida. So I was not expecting to see one of those. And I saw all sorts of shit in those in my par- a grandparents' backyard. And I would, but if I was expecting it, if I, if I saw like, I don't know, like I would see crazy stuff all the time, like big fish or like crabs or even like lizards and stuff. But I, I wouldn't be shocked by that because I would expect it. Was not expecting this, so I don't, it threw me Florida's off. Florida's crazy. Yeah, I don't think I could ever get used to that. Even if I grew up around that, if I saw if I saw a beetle the size of a rat, I don't think that I'm, there's ever going to be a moment in my life where I'm ever going to be just like, oh yeah, there it is. There's something awful about a bug so big that you can't swat it. <laughs> like, you would have to punch it, yeah, and it would probably oh. still survive. That's not fun. Ew, That's can you not imagine fun stepping on that thing? Wow. You wouldn't. You would have to like stomp on it, and it would not be like easy. It would be like it would be like maybe I got it. Yeah, though. No, oh, I don't God. know. I I did. I ran away. Yeah, I literally they could probably ran away. run really fast. And too. you want to hear how crazy my family is? I ran away. I ran inside. I tell my grandma, I just saw a rhinoceros beetle. It was insane. And she goes, Well, why didn't you catch it? And I was like, oh. What? And like I ran back out to like. And I got like a net because I was like, oh, that'd be so cool to catch that. And like, I never, I would catch things back in their backyards and then release them, but it was gone. It'd flown away, but it was terrifying. Wait, they can fly? Yeah. Yeah. Have you uh, seen Bugs Life? Yeah, they can fly. Oh, it's that guy. Um, okay. That's what I should watch. I should watch yeah, Bugs no, Life. Because yeah, my, mind you, uh, this same backyard was where I also tried to catch a gardener snake and it bit me in the thumb. <laughs> like, oh, I, yeah, they I was, bite you, but those are fine. There, it was fine and I knew it would be fine, but I still just stupidly tried to just grab a snake i was like seven but it sounds like my older brother like he was always catching snakes and lizards and then keeping them yeah they're too fast Ah. yikes well we had a a different gardener snake in our garage every month like in a tank what the hell dude i would flip out yeah i would throw up on the snake yeah that'd be effective why that's so mean they'd be like ah (laughs) because it's scary and that's like my first instinct is (laughs) That would probably work with the shark. Yeah. Throw, Throw up the on ocean. a shark. They're like, ew, it tastes gross. And they leave. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> <Yeah>. This person <laughs> tastes like vomit. Well, wow. I wish I could see a manatee. They're like cows of the sea. They're awesome. You can see them in Florida. Yeah. They're all over the I'd place. I'd like to do that. I want to see that. But then that would mean going to Florida and like having to risk interacting with Florida, man. Florida's a crazy place. It is a crazy place. 
we'll leave that for another time. Uh, yeah, tune in for Florida Cast next. Time. We should do a Florida Cast. We shall tell our Florida stories about Florida man. All right, I oh, have Florida oh, stories. I, I have Florida stories. Well, great. Maybe we'll have to do a Florida stories episode. Flo- Dude, my Florida. Florida stories. We'll call it uh, the Florida Project. Oh, we should bring Tommy because Tommy freaking grew up in Florida. <laughs> yeah, Holy cut that out, Kevin. Shame. <laughs> You gotta cut that joke. The Florida Project? What's so wrong about that? Because it's, it's a, a decent movie. It's a really dark movie that I reference. Love that movie. That's it's a fine. great movie. I love that movie. We've said worse things on this. I podcast. know. All right. So, so little homework for our viewers and listeners: go watch Florida Project. Oh no! And don't. Come back. I for- love the idea of Actually, a Florida no. man. Episode, watch that movie. Though. That movie's great. It's I'm gonna go watch a Bugs Life. Guys, also give me some suggestions for the uh, for my little puppy, Banana. Um, teach it yeah, how to that's fight. The perfect name. Uh, teach it how to ride a uh, horseback. Oh. It's a great time for exercising yourself and him. Mm-hmm. Um, to take him on long walks. Walks. If you get training treats, um, if you are take do this a lot. Literally fill your pocket with treats, and when you're walking with Banana. Make a little, whatever sound you want to use to get that puppy's attention, whether it's their name or like a, or like a sound, anything, make that sound. And if they look at you, give them the treat and do it like every 10 seconds. Can you take puppy on walks? Time. Um, you just don't want them to get in contact with other dogs really, but taking them on gentle, like walks, like is it's not terrible for them. You don't want to go okay. on extensive stuff bec- or like stairs too much for puppies is not good for their hips when they're so young. Olivia, do you have anyone that you can contact with the foster agent, like who you got yeah. the dog from? I yeah, would probably I want also that, talk please. to them because they might have guidelines that you have to follow. Yeah, because when they're at a got certain it. age, it's definitely like you want to minimize exposure to stuff because of vaccinations and things like that. But I know people that are anti-vax for dogs, so oh. I don't know. <laughs> well, so that's thing. real dumb. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, submit your shoot dude to shoot dude, dude at smosh.com. D O O O D. Yep. We hope that this podcast has been entertaining. Yeah, tell us what you think. We want to hear your feedback. Give us five stars and write, write, ha ha, ha ha, ha podcast. Wait, can y'all rate my, my, my pod too? I only have like three ratings. Oh, yeah. Sure. And if you guys rate, want more podcast Olivia's content, pod. go listen to Fish Cheeks on your yeah. local listening mm-hmm. apps because yeah. that's Thanks, a guys. very good one. I love you guys. I love you guys. Olivia. See you on house party. Yeah, good, right. yeah. See you on house party. Good luck with your puppy, Liv. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.